Howdy and welcome back to the Antarium. In today's video we will show you one of our carpenter ant colonies. This species is Campanotus discipiens. It is a widespread and common carpenter ant in the state of Texas. These ants are naturally found inside live trees and fallen logs. They are one of the many organisms that assist in the decomposition and recycling of trees. This colony was captured in the fall of 2021 from a small log found while hiking in a forest. This is one of the easiest ways to collect a wild colony of this ant species. Their numbers have steadily climbed to several hundred and now need an expansion. They are even crowding the outward of this mini hearth. First, we connected one of our Oss Ant Outworlds to the mini hearth. This helped to relieve some of the limited space on them. They were weary of it at first, but quickly changed their minds for the DB roaches after nightfall. Here you can see them under a red light. Carpenter ants are far more active at night. A good way to locate colonies is by waiting for nightfall and watching for their increased foraging activity. If your home is infested with them, it is also wise to inspect at night to see where their activity is the highest. In Texas, we have three almost identical looking species of carpenter ants. The only true way to distinguish them is via hairs on their heads. First, we have Campanotus discolor. They have hairs along the sides of their heads towards their mandibles. Second is Campanotus discipiens. They lack the hairs on the sides, but do have a few facing downward on their clypeus. Third is Campanotus saii. They are even more lacking of hairs, but do have a few facing downward on their clypeus. Additionally, their clypeus has a more distinctive notch at the bottom. Now that they are a little acclimated to the new outworld, we can introduce them to the bigger living space. We added another mini hearth so we could connect the new nest to them without disturbing them too much. This will also show us if they like the new nest more than the mini hearths. But what kind of nest is this? Where did it come from? I will show you. This is a beautiful handmade formicarium carved from solid wood. It was a commissioned nest made for me by Alejandro. His YouTube channel is Tex Ants. He spends a great deal of time handcrafting nests just like this one. He is very good at this and produces some of those beautiful formicariums you will ever see. If you haven't already checked out his channel before, you really should. Let's just take a few moments to appreciate the excellent craftsmanship here as our carpenter ants begin to explore it. This was made from the solid cedar wood. It has a deep water tower built into it and is sealed by a Lexan acrylic sheet which is screwed in place. The galleries were carefully carved out to a size suitable for these ants and make an excellent use of the space. Carpenter ants prefer to be crammed in narrow galleries inside their wooden fortresses. This species in particular also likes the nest to be more on the dry side. Having a single central water tower allows for moisture without making it too humid throughout the nest. The nest also comes with a flexible cork cover to keep the nest dark. It has tiny magnets that align with the screws that keep the acrylic in place. It's a very nice touch. This formicarium is perfect for them. It provides a more natural setting for their biology and has a high quality handcrafted look to it. And this is just a glimpse of what Alejandro is capable of. Seriously, check out his channel for more. Let's fast forward a little bit and see where they are with the move. Alright, looks like the queen finally decided to take a peek around.
and it looks like we spooked her with the light, and she's heading right back to the tube. That's alright, she will eventually be back in the nest. Traffic into the nest has really picked up with the queen having explored it. Now we start to see workers moving in brood to the nest. Here we are a few hours later. The queen is more settled in and a significant amount of the brood has been taken into the new nest. Notice how they like to cram together. That is exactly how you'd find them inside a fallen log or a tree. It allows them to hide their populations very well. I added a heating pad to see what would happen. Despite the elevated nature of the nest, the ants can clearly detect an increase of warmth. Look at how they have moved all the cocoons towards the farthest edge of the nest. They do this to accelerate their development. The timeline from egg to adult in this species is on average a little over a month. As a larger ant, they take more time to develop than smaller ant species. The queen here has laid a new clutch of eggs. This is a great sign that this has been a positive move with minimal stress. She is continuing her brood cycle without any breaks. Let's get into some more details on their biology. First, taxonomically, they are in the ant subfamily Formicini. This grouping of ants have one petiole and a circular shaped acidopore for spraying formic acid. Formicin ants cannot sting as they do not actually have a stinger. This Campanata species is monogamous. This means they have only one fertile queen in the colony and will not tolerate competing reproducers. It's her progeny and no one else's. Do not attempt to group queens of this species together. It will not end well. The queens in this ant species are fully claustral. That means at the founding stage, the queen does not forage for resources. She instead seals herself in a claustral chamber and relies on her food reserves to feed her first generation. Her worker offspring will reconnect the colony to the outside world and begin to bring in new resources. Raising a colony from a single queen with this species is best done by putting her in a test tube setup and placing her in a quiet place to be left alone for over a month. You really want to minimize disturbing her and just let her follow through with the process. Queens in this species will lay eggs in clutches periodically. It is not a constant layer of eggs. When she is near a cycle of egg laying, you will likely notice due to her appearance. Her abdomen will swell as her ovaries produce the eggs, resulting in the stretching of the membrane that holds the turgites and the sternites together. 
These are the segmented armor plates on the Gaster. A queen in this state is known as being physogastric. If you look closely here, you can actually see individual eggs through the membrane between the tergites and the sternites. If you have a queen that goes for a long period of time without being physogastric, you may want to check to see if the colony is getting adequate protein and sugars. Some queens go through long lulls without laying any eggs. This is completely normal as a seasonal cycle. Carpenter ants have a polymorphic worker cast. This means they have varying sizes and adaptations. Some ants do have worker casts that are all identical, and those are referred to as monomorphic. Each size or class tends to have different tasks or jobs associated with it. Here we have a ninitic, a minor, and a super major. Ninitics are the smallest workers and the first to appear in a colony. They generally perform nursing tasks with the queen and the brood. Miners are a little larger and tend to engage a lot in the foraging for resources outside of the nest. The majors and super majors are the largest of the worker caste. They are adapted for defending the colony from threats. With their large heads filled with strong muscles to operate their mandibles, they have a stronger ability to fight and have more weight to throw around. The amount of nutrition a larva receives will ultimately determine what female cast it becomes. This is why the larger ants appear later in a colony's development. Carpenter ants, like all fermescent ants, have a single petiole. In Campanatus, it typically has a singular spike-like node on top of it. These ants will form what is known as a satellite nest. This is when a single ant colony occupies more than one particular nesting space. In their case, it is typically logs nearby or other trees. One colony could be occupying all the small nearby logs at once. We'll keep you updated on this colony's progress in future videos. They continue to grow, so I expect a much larger population before winter arrives later this year. Perhaps maybe even alates. If you enjoyed this content, please give us a like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We will see you in the next video.